Richard, uh, talk about this card, man. Leo Santa Cruz versus uh, Miguel Flores. We got a can't miss barn burner fight of the year against Omar versus uh, uh, John Molina. It's a uh, it's a great card, man. It's 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 a great card right here in the heart of LA. I mean, yeah. You look at the at those guys' records and you look at their styles. And as I said at the press conference, styles make fights. It really is. I don't think there would be that you can't get better matchmaking. These are two fights which really have fight of the year candidate written all over it. You will not be disappointed. And I think that's important uh, when you are on Fox uh, Channel 11 where you are going to be exposing the sport of boxing not to a sports or boxing fan audience only, but you are going to expose the sport to the general market. There are going to be people watching that night, Saturday night, prime time, uh, 8 o'clock uh, East Coast, 5 o'clock Pacific, prime time, Fox. There are going to be people watching which never seen a fight. And the general market, and when they're going to be on that Channel 11, you want to make sure that those two guys fighting in the ring are going to be guys which are not going to be dancing around the fight, a ring, but are really going to engage and are going to know how to entertain a crowd. And that's why this card is absolutely perfect for Fox because this is the kind of fights and matchups which will bring new fans to the sport of Fox. It, it, it harkens back to the time with like Sugar Ray was on yeah. TV on Saturday and you know all, all these guys were like you know my grandfather's like yeah I just turn on the TV and they're fight Saturday night. Why was boxing where it was back then? Was it more exciting? No. Uh, were the fighters better? No. Um, but you know what? It had less competition because all these other league sports were not yet where they are today. So how did these league sports get from where they were back then in those days to where they are today? And where, why did boxing go from where it was to where it is today? They sort of like crossed cross path a little bit. What happened is that boxing became part of the premium subscription services like HBO and Showtime, which threw a lot of money at the sport and the promoters and the fighters and the participants took advantage of that money mm -hmm. and, the, and the fights moved from free over the air networks to a uh, premium subscription. So then the leagues, the basketball and football and so on, they are starting to be featured more and more on free network television and look where they are today and look where boxing is. So for us, uh, I just said it before to somebody, the biggest news of 2018 is not this fight or that fight or whatever. The biggest news of 2018 is the fact that Fox, free, truly free, every home has it, is back, is, is, is back in a big way, in a major way, is embracing boxing like no network, free over the air network has done in the last 30 or 40 years. So that's the story here. And it is going to be these, and we saw it already with the Charlo fight, over 2 million people watching. Uh, I mean, this is like taking the sport to a totally different level, and it takes these fighters to a different level. Because if you have to build up the next generation of stars, and you can do that with 2, 3 million, 4 million people watching, it's much easier than if you only have a few hundred thousand watching. I mean, simple as that. And the beauty with boxing is, which really is the purest of all sports, where you have two guys in the ring, uh, going at it, and most of these fighters have unbelievable stories. And America, America will fall in love with many of these athletes when they hear their stories. And when you can tell their story with Fox, then, you know, that's a big thing. I mean, we saw the Charlo, what they did for the Charlo, what Fox did for the Charlo fight, how they promoted it, how they put these, um, these, uh, uh, you know, camp, these behind the camp uh, 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 segments together and these like, you know, the, these all access stories and so on, which got ratings of a million to a million three. I mean, we're talking about like a shoulder programming. Uh, that's more, that's more ratings. That's better ratings than 95% of the fights did the last couple of years, you know. 
So that's the power of Fox. Mm. That's also, I feel, the, the perfect main event fighter in Leo Santa Cruz. He's oh. one of the nicest human beings ever I've ever met ever, and he's a dog in the ring. I was just telling him, I, I truly feel Leo Santa Cruz is of the ilk of like Marco Antonio Barrera, you know, Eric Morales, kind of kind of those names. But I feel like he doesn't have that that respect that he should. Um, like those guys, what opponents does he need? Like, is it Gary Russell? Is it um, is it moving up? Is I, I mean, what what is it Valdez? Is, you know what I mean? Like like who who is it that can make you know make Santa Cruz kind of. In, you know, in that class where they can't deny him. I think, I think he is, you know, I think he is one of the biggest names we've seen coming out of Mexico together with Abner Mars. He is a fan favorite here, and so I don't think he really needs one of those fights. As a fight fan, you might be surprised the fight I like to see the most, because the first two were just amazing, is a rematch with uh, Carl Frampton. That's the fight I love to see, because um, Carl is a great fighter, a very exciting fighter. So um, I love to see that fight again. The other fights, yeah, okay, they're there, but let's face it, Leo's legacy is cemented by what he has accomplished. Three division world champion, so I mean, this, this is like, you know, I, I like I like to see as a fight fan. I like to see fights where I know it's going to be a great fight, and I know uh, Frampton and Leo would again the third fight would be. Terrific. Obviously, we're going to be in LA. Are we going to see uh, LA fan favorites Jose and uh, Carlos Balderas on on this yes, card? Yes, actually, we will. Uh, but what they want to do is we're going to split them up. We're going to have them. Uh, we're going to have one of them, uh, one of the Calderas is going to be on the Mars card and the other one is going to be on this card. They sort of like got a bit spooked when uh, they saw what happened with the Charlos. So, uh, so they want to be split up. <laughs> right. That's good, man. At least we're going to see them. I mean, it's back to back weekend, so, exactly. so that'll be good. Um, just want to ask you, man, uh, obviously, um, just your, your big boxing head, so just kind of want to get, get your take on um, Canelo. Uh, versus Rocky Fielding moved up 168 won, won a title what well, were your thoughts I mean, on that I I generally don't really like to watch fights where you know what's going to happen <laughs> and what I thought was going to happen exactly happened actually um, my, my my boys watched the fight and they I was sitting downstairs outside smoking a cigar and they came with their computers and they and with their computer and they said do you want to watch the fight I said no I don't want to watch it I know what's going to happen and uh, sure enough, like a few minutes later, uh, they came back and they said, you were right. That's exactly what happened. I said, well, anybody who is in boxing is like knew what was going to happen. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what happened. So I think it's, um, you know, even if it's only $10, you know, if you see those kind of $10, you know, fight fans, even if it's only $10, they're not dumb. I mean, you don't want to keep on spending 10 bucks and stuff like that. Because then you feel like, hey, you know, so like pay what you, you know, you get what you pay for. And uh, so I'm a little bit, I was a little bit, um, I was a bit disappointed. It, it seems as though Canelo and Triple G are, are on the road to, to single the mile this year again. Um, is that something you want to see? No, I, I have to tell you, I purchased the first fight, I purchased the second fight, but I'm definitely, even if it's only 10 bucks, uh, I am not going to watch the third fight because, um, you know, I've seen 24 rounds. I've seen 24 great rounds, close rounds. Um, Canelo can't hurt Triple G in 24 rounds. And uh, Triple G can't hurt Canelo in 24 rounds. So it's going to be another one of those, what I just said before. Um, I already know what's going to happen. You're going to have another 12 rounds, round round 25 to 36 is going to be exactly the same like round 1 to round 24. Mm. I think that, you know, there are better matchups for, for Golovkin out there. I'd love to see a golovkin Charlo fight. Mm. I'd like to see a Golovkin-Danny Jacobs uh, rematch. Mm. Uh, I'd love to see a Danny Jacobs-Canelo um, fight. Mm. Uh, I think they're just more exciting matchups than that mm -hmm. for, frankly, both guys. Well, I, I, I wonder, I mean, obviously, like, like you said, you what's up, John? <laughs> um, I mean, yes, you're right, we did see the 24 rounds, but they were exciting as well. I mean, is, is that not kind of a, a reason to yeah, kind of get I've those guys around again? 
if I see something already, I seen 24 rounds. Mm. I just don't need to see another 12, you know. Mm -hmm. I've seen 24. I rather see something else. Like I don't like to keep watching the same movie over and over and over and over again. I mean, at one point it's like, okay, I get it. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. Do, do you feel those other fights are ripe right now? Like Jacobs Canelo, um, Charlo Triple G, Charlo Canelo. That would be a terrific fight. And you know, since uh, you know, I mean, since supposedly both guys are affiliated with. Obviously, Canelo is, but mm -hmm. with Jacobs, uh, you know, with, uh, you know, if they, that should be a fight which should be relatively easy to be made, you know. And uh, for Golovkin, you know, I think if I would be Golovkin, I probably would go with the PPC platform because I think there's a lot of good fights for him there, uh, which he can, which he can do. And let's face it, he is a pay-per-view attraction, mm -hmm. and uh, I think there are pay-per-view fights out there for him. And at this point in his career, you, you said it, you said he was older. Um, yeah, he's older, but I think uh, he still has several great fights uh, in him. And, uh, you know, I understand he has like, cleaned house a bit. Uh, I don't really know who is still part of his team or not. But, you know, sometimes that's what it takes, you know, to clean house a bit and be re-energized. And I think there are some great, great uh, matches for him under the, um, un un under the PPC umbrella. Richard, uh, always a pleasure talking to you, man. Tell, tell the fans where they can follow you, see what Ringstar is doing. You guys are always up to stuff and uh, always doing well in boxing. Well, we have Ringstar Sports on uh, Twitter and Instagram and Facebook, so uh, check us out. There it is. Thank you, Richard. Thank Appreciate you. your time, sir. Thank you.